This is Will Pinchak. I work for Juniper Networks. I'm an education services engineer. And I'm about to do a learning bite on Contrail Enterprise Multi-Cloud. And I'm going to do an overview of the Contrail Services node. So what is the purpose of the Contrail Services node? So the CSN provides vRouter agent functionality to bare metal servers. And its primary purpose is to provide DHCP and DNS services to bare metal servers that you add to Contrail Overlay Network. So what does that mean? Well, let's talk about let's talk about our scenario here. We're going to have we want to attach a, a virtual machine and a bare metal server to a Contrail virtual network. Now I've done a separate learning bite on this, so we won't go into the details of this. But uh, you can you can look at one of my other learning bites to to talk where we talk about the details of this and how how we make this happen. But when we do this, you know we're going to attach a VM to a virtual network and any other devices, whether they're VMs or BMSs, any traffic destined to any other devices on this uh, overlay network will get tunneled over a VXLAN tunnel. Now, in the case of a bare metal server, bare metal server, when we attach it to the IP fabric, will get past its traffic to the top of rack switch, and it will be there from within the bridge domain that will uh, route traffic to remote MAC addresses over VXLAN tunnels. Okay. Now, the question you might you've got to ask yourself is, well, where is this DHCP address coming from, right? When, they, when these guys get added to the virtual network, how does it get its DHCP address? And how does this bare metal server get its DHCP address? Well, for a VM, the local vRouter agent sends the DHCP offer to, to the VM itself. So here's what we have. We have a VM attached to a vRouter, uh, and the vRouter can either forward traffic out to the fabric or it can fabric, uh, send it to the vRouter agent if it's special traffic, for instance, DHCP uh, discover message. So that's what we see here. The VM, number one, sends a, v, uh, a DHCP discover message. The vRouter notices that it's, it's a discover message and passes it to the vRouter agent. It's the vRouter agent on the compute node that will then uh, send the DHCP offer back through this path over to the VM over to VM1 to give its its IP address. Okay, so that's how a VM gets its DHCP address. Okay, however, what about bare metal servers? Okay, because a bare metal server by itself now this is complicated. Look, a bare metal server doesn't have by itself a vRouter agent. To do this, is what, what, what you need to do is assign a vRouter agent to it. It's going to be the CSN. The CSN is going to have a vRouter. It's going to have a vRouter agent. You're going to assign this CSN to top of rack switches. So in this case, in order for the BMS server to get a DHCP address or to have a DHCP server available to it on the control overlay network, you have to assign this CSN to its top of rack switch, okay? which we'll show you how to do later. Okay. So what happens is, once you do that and attach this to the IP fabric, you know, to do, uh, you know, launch this bare metal server as a bare metal server instance. Once you do that, the bare metal server will come up, send a DHCP discover message up to the QFX5100. Uh, what it'll see is that it's for a broadcast address. Okay, right? It's sent to zero, all zeros, right? Or no, sorry, to all Fs, right? So what does a switch do with all Fs? It sends it to all remote interfaces. Uh, including uh, a VXLAN tunnel that goes back to the CSN. So it turns out that any other top of rack switches might see this as well that are associated with the same virtual network. But in this case, the only one we care about is the one that gets forwarded over this VXLAN tunnel to the CSN. The CSN decapsulates it and says, oh, this is a DHCP request to my vRouter agent that is servicing this top of rack switch. The vRouter agent will respond here, that's number two, over the VXLAN tunnel uh, to the bare metal server with a DHCP offer. Okay, and that's that's the purpose of it. Now, also, which we don't show here, is uh, DNS ser services as well. So in that DHCP offer, there'll be a DHCP server, and it will be the CSN that will act as the DNS server for this bare metal server as well, if it's configured to do so. Okay, so. What are some of our prerequisites to making this happen? We need to have a Contrail cluster with a Contrail command user interface in place. We need VXLAN routing enabled. We need an onboarded IP fabric with EVPN VXLAN overlay signaling established. We need the spine nodes assigned the CRB gateway role and the leaf nodes assigned the CRB access role. 
So our lab, this is what we're going to have. We're going to have a contrail cluster, which are these bottom boxes down here. We have an open stack orchestrator. We've got a contrail control node. We've got two compute nodes, compute one and two, that both act as an open stack compute and contrail V router, and also a single CSN, right? And that CSN we'll, we'll need to assign to our top of our X switches, which are these two QFX5100. And we also have a spine node here for our IP fabric. These are it's a three node IP fabric, two leafs and one, uh, one uh, spine node. The spine node is going to act as a route reflector and a CRB gateway, and the two leaf nodes are going to be acting as CRB access nodes. Now, if you remember on our other diagram, we have another interface here that goes off to a bare metal server. Gigi004 goes out to that bare metal server. So, again, I have already a, a different learning byte available that goes over the specifics of uh, launching a bare metal server. Uh, it's called uh, bare metal server to VM bridging or it's VM to bare metal service bridging. So I won't, I'm not going to re show, I'm not going to show you those again, the steps to make that happen again. Uh, so you'll see there's some hidden stuff I'm going to do behind. This is actually covered in another learning byte. Uh, so, so just keep that in mind. So uh, first off, we're going to verify our MPBGP sessions. So if I go to the QFX 10K, remember, you know, here's our topology. We want to verify that the QFX 10K has these multi-protocol BGP sessions for EVPN up to the control node and the two QFX 5100. Uh, so we'll do that by going to the 10K here. And if I say uh, show BGP summary, you'll see that I have the underlay uh, BGP sessions up and running, but I also have my three overlay BGP EVPN sessions up, right? One to QFX 5101, to QFX 5102, and then one back to the control node. Okay, so those are established. The next step is to verify our CRB roles that were assigned to the fabric devices. So if we bring up uh, under Contrail command, we'll see. We'll go to fabrics. Under fabrics, we have a brownfield fabric here. Okay, and we want to verify that uh, the spine node is a route reflector, DC gateway, and CRB gateway. It has been assigned that, so that works. And these two are CRB access. So we have our spine node and two leafs that have already been onboarded, which means that Contrail Enterprise Multicloud can now configure them as layer two or layer three VXLAN gateways. Okay, and then we need to assign the CSN to the, to the devices themselves. Remember, we're going to hang the bare metal server off of QFX 5102. So if we want those bare metal servers to have DNS or DHCP services enabled, we go there and we, we go under that node, the top of rack switch that serves it, and we specify Tor service node and specify the CSN node. Okay? And that's that's what we have. Now, behind the scenes, what I'm not going to show you is how to modify the default security group or create a virtual network or create a virtual machine or to launch a BMS instance. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to pause the video and do that um, because this is already covered in my VM to bare metal server bridging learning byte. So look there for the specifics on this. So so just a quick note, I'm creating the uh, virtual network here for virtual network A. Okay, here's the subnet. Uh, here's the DHCP pool where, where the VMs and bare metal servers will get their IP addresses from. Here's uh, the gateway address and then the service address. By default, the service address is 1.2. So this will be, you know, if, you've, if you want uh, your VMs and bare metal servers to get DNS, from the appropriate uh, vRouter agent. You can specify a different address. If you don't like 1.2, which is the default, um, you can change it to, you know, three, four, you know, whatever number you want it to be, to be the, the address for the services. I'm gonna provide DHCP and DNS services on this subnet. So I'll go ahead and create this VM. Or sorry, virtual network. So that's created. So I'll go ahead and launch the virtual machine and bare metal server and then come back. Okay, so currently uh, I've been able to launch my two instances, bare metal server instance and a VM instance. Okay, uh, so I have the topology built that we were trying to build, which is, this is the topology we're trying to build. So I've got VM1 up, it's got a DHCP address already, got it from its local vRouter agent. 
In the bare metal server, I have its interface down because I want you to I want to I want you to witness the DHCP request that goes on here. Uh, so so that's what we'll do is we'll go to that uh, we'll first go to the CSN. Let's look at so notice that ETH one is uh, is where the CSN is going to is going to see any uh, data traffic, right? The any VXLAN traffic is going to come in this ETH. So we will go to um, here. And then we'll go to, where are we going to go? To the CSN. So we go to the CSN. If I go to the CSN, we'll see, I want to show you the interfaces. So here's my interfaces. So we have ETH1 here. Okay. All right. So that's where the incoming traffic will come from. So I'm going to go ahead and do a TCP dump verbose on ETH1. Okay. So we, we're going to start that. And then, okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring up the interface on the uh, bare metal server so on the bare metal server let's get that guy up okay so here's my bare metal server um, and you see that i put the interface down it's eth1 is the one we're trying to work with so i'm going to say if up eth1 okay now this is going to cause uh the dhcp request to go out so uh we'll quickly go over to the uh, csn to, to see if we can see that dhcp offer uh dhcp uh, discover and offer go out so i do this we're going to see hopefully get to dhcp uh it does it gets a dhcp address and sure enough i'm going to go ahead and stop this tcp dump but here we go Okay, we see from 10.10.1.32 destined to the CSN. Okay, we see a VXLAN packet go out. In that VXLAN packet is a is a DHCP discover message, right? Uh, sent to all Fs and uh, or to all ones. And uh, here's my BMS's MAC address. And um, good enough. It's a request for an IP address. And then in response, the CSN sends back to uh, QFX 5102 over a VXLAN tunnel a message that says, uh, for your address, here's your IP address, which is, oh, here, your IP. Okay? So sure enough, so if I go back to the bare metal server, I go here and I go IP address, I'll see that I do have .1.101 was my address, and I should be able to ping 191.68.1.100, the VM, and sure enough, I can. So that's it. And just as a last point of reference, we see here, since we're gonna provide DNS, that if I cat the Etsy resolve.conf file, we'll see here that the name server was set to the service address, which is ends up being the CSN. Okay, if I go to the bare metal server, sorry, on the bare metal server, and I try to ping 192.168.1.2, we'll see here it'll ping, and if I say IP neighbor to see the ARP entries, I'll see that the ARP entry is 32.07, right, is 1.2. If I go to back to the bare, uh, to the CSN and look at the interfaces, what did I say it was 32.07. So sure enough, it's MAC address of, of Ethernet 1. Okay, everything we would expect. Okay, so let's go back here. In this learning byte, we describe the purpose of the Contrail service node, which is to provide DNS and DHCP services for uh, bare metal servers. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses, learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths, Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.